Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Micro Monsters. Today we're going to be building this brilliant card for a Christmas tree. Um, you can see here, if I press the A button, actually plays Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, and so our youngest member of Micro Monsters squad, which is Natasha here, she made the card today. Uh, and Jasmine and I have been working on the electronics, which you can see if we just take the front off here. There's the electronics for the tree. So we have to say a massive thank you um, to Andrew Gale of pocketmoneytronics.co.uk, there'll be a link below about that, for sending us a prototype of the kit for this Christmas tree to solder together today. Uh, we actually backed his Kickstarter, which is like a site where you can back projects to get them to happen. We did that a few weeks ago and it finished yesterday. Uh, but Andrew was kind enough to send us one of his kind of prototypes for us to try out and show to you guys today. So let's crack on and show you what we did with that. So what we're actually going to build today, uh, and we're going to solder it all, and it's Jasmine's first time at soldering. You know yeah. about that? No. We're going to have a bit of practice. We're going to solder this PCB. Okay, so you can see on here, all those little tiny holes, if I can get it closer and focused, um, that's where we've got to put components through. Um, and the components we have in this kit, if I put the kit back down there, we have these two components. These are called capacitors. Capacitors, in a way they're similar to batteries, they store electric charge, but they only store it usually for a very short period of time, and they only store a very small amount usually. Um, but they can be used for all kinds of things in electric circuits. Um, I'm not brilliant at electronics, I don't know exactly, and I'll have to go and ask um, Andrew, I don't know exactly what the capacitors are doing in this circuit. I think they are for steadying out the voltage, the electricity that we get from our battery pack so that it's nice and smooth for the LEDs, um, because if it keeps going up and down, then I think the LEDs would have problems. I think that's what they might be for that, but don't hold me to that. So there's two capacitors. And we have a few little other bits. We have a single resistor. Um, resistors resist electricity going through a circuit, so they slow it down in a way. Um, I have no idea what that one is doing on this project, but I do know that most projects with LEDs in uh, seem to need resistors. We should really go and learn about that, but let's get for soldering today. Uh, then we have four, and this is the kind of interesting bit of this Christmas tree, four of these um, RGB LEDs. Do you want to guess what RGB is? Uh. So LEDs put light out. Put light on. They, as in, they, they're light, aren't they? So what might R, G, and B be? Red, green, and blue. Okay. Oh, yeah, because of the colours. R, G, B. So often you hear things like R, G, B screen, which means a red, green, and blue screen. Okay. Um, R, G, B uh, LEDs, if you've ever looked at a normal LED that does one colour, these have four legs. You might just about better see those on there. Four different legs. Most LEDs have two. And the reason this has four is it can put out red light, green light, and blue light all at the same time. And if you've got red, green, and blue light, you can make any color of light by mixing them together. So if you put all of them on, it will be white. And if you put different amounts of red, green, and blue on, you can make all different colors. If you just put the red on, we'll get red, just green, but you can make anything. That's why it's so superb for this Christmas tree, because we can make lights showing up in any color we like. So we've got four of those. Uh, all identical. I lie, we've got five of them. Lots of them there, there's another one as well. So there are LEDs. And the last bit of the kit, which I think is quite fun, um, we, and you've seen them before, we've, we've used them before and shown you them before, is this. Can you remember what it is? A buzzer? Yeah, a piezoelectric buzzer. It will make a frequency sound. It's not going to play beautiful music, but it will make that kind of normal Christmas lights, tweeting kind of noises, and we can make it do some Christmas songs or Christmas carols, uh, and when we program that later, you'll see it. Um, but that's it, so that's the whole of the kit. We've got to solder those onto um, various bits on here, and thankfully, Andrew has given us instructions for how to do that. Um, so that's what we're gonna crack on with next, and you can watch us do it. Um, you probably don't wanna watch it in uh, real time, so we're gonna speed it up, and you can see us hopefully whiz through doing it uh, and ready to show you. Uh, so we finished the soldering, 
going and here you can see the finished trim. Um, we've actually done a little bit of programming which we'll show you in a moment uh, and if we press the A button we should be able to hear Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So you can kind of see how we've attached the clips at the bottom there and you can see the back where we kind of cut off all the parts we've got in there. Uh, so it's got two bits really, it's got one that controls the lights and one that controls the music. Uh, if you haven't seen how to program music before, um, go and have a look at our Star Wars video, it will teach you how to program music um, and we'll put a link to that. But we're not going to go through this program like we normally do, we write it as we're going along um, because we've done a lot of this stuff before and we've shown you it before so we'll talk through how it works. So like I said there's two bits, one for light and one for music. So the bit for music, we're using a forever loop because we want it to just carry on going and going, but we do want to be able to shut the music up maybe because <laughs> it might get a bit annoying. So I've put a variable uh, here called play music and I've set it to true. And then when you press the A button, if play music, the variable is currently true, so if it's set to true currently, then we set it to false. And if it's currently set to false, we set it to true. So you just flip it around if you press the A button. And every time it comes around this loop for the music, um, it checks whether it should play the music again the next time. And if play music has been set to false because you press the button, it will stop playing. Uh, and then if you press the A button again, it will start playing because it goes around that loop. Uh, so Jay, do you want to talk through roughly what it's doing in here? Um, uh, you'll have heard the song earlier, which was, what do we play? Uh, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Um, so we only played a little bit. Do you want to talk through what we've got here, roughly what you did? Um, well, we got an image. Uh, well, we just found the notes in the C major scale. Um, and we found out what notes they were. So if they were like four or three, high or low, uh, or five or something like that. Um, and we said how long they last for. And that would make it. That's it. Playing, yeah. So we've done the first two kind of lines of Rudolph's Red, Red Nose Reindeer. We haven't done it all the way through. We might finish it off later. Um, but all of this play tone stuff is all in music. Um, it's nice and easy to do. Um, so that's what we've done. Put it in there. So if you play now or even in the simulator, you'll see we're using our favourite simulator. The, um, it used to be called Code the Microbit. It's now on pxt.microbit.org. Um, but you'll see they've got some new stuff on it actually at the moment where when you bring in a particular library that I'll show you in a moment, it shows you as if you've actually connected to something down the bottom here. And if we actually uh, press play, it will play that music through my computer. So that's for the playing music here. Yeah? And for the lights, which is really the bit most of you might have ever, never done before, we need a special bit, a special library. If you click on these three dots up here, these three kind of lines the menu, and do add package, the one we want is called NeoPixel. It's here, you click on it and it will add it. And when you do, a new um, kind of tab down here will open called NeoPixel. So NeoPixel is the name given for um, a way of putting together these red, green, blue LEDs, the multicolor LEDs basically, so that with just two, well, with three pins, with a live, a, a three volt, a ground, and one controller, you can set any of the five LEDs on our Christmas tree to um, a particular color of light by setting a bit of red, a bit of green, and a bit of blue and mixing them all together. Um, and you can set um, them there and you can see we, we've chosen different colors. So we've got another forever loop. Um, you have to initialize the NeoPixel. So we created a variable called tree and we dragged the NeoPixel here so we've got a NeoPixel collected to pin two of our um, of our Christmas tree. So this is the yellow wire on there is connected to pin two on our micro bit and that controls the NeoPixel. Uh, and it's got uh, five LEDs on it. So you have to set five there and they are red, green and blue RGB LEDs. And then once you've basically initialized it, you then set what particular LED you be to want to be a particular colour. So if you look at our Christmas tree again, and they've actually got, it might just about focus on there, each LED has a number next to it that tells you which one it is. 
Um, so we've set the first one to be red, the third one to be white. Then you have to call, and this caught us out, we forgot to do this, you have to call this method called show. So you drag that from NeoPixel again. And then when you drag it on, it will just say item. You have to make sure that that says tree, because our NeoPixel is called tree. If you don't put show at the end of a bit where you're changing the colors, it won't bother changing them. So you have to do set this LED to this color, set this LED to this color, and then say show. And then we've got a little pausing because we want it to show that those two colors on that LED for a few seconds. And then it just goes on through the LEDs and you make up your own light show. You could do it all manually like this, or um, we might actually have a go later at creating a clever loop that automatically changes the color. This is a nice simple one for the demo for now. Um, so you can see it will just carry on going forever, it doesn't stop, it will just keep going all the way through the loop. Uh, and if you watch the micro bit here, you can hopefully see those LEDs cycling through colours. It might not be brilliant on, on a camera, um, let's see how close I can get it, but they are cycling through all kinds of different colours. The only catch, and I don't know if this is just on the prototype that we've got of the Christmas tree here, or if it would be the same on the final version, is that the um, green and the red LEDs are, around, are kind of switched incorrectly. So when I'm setting an LED on here to red, it's actually going to set it to green. And when I'm setting one to green, it's actually going to set it to red. Um, you can just do what we've done here. But if you want to do a really clever color, um, like pink or something, which isn't in this drop down of colors here, um, you can actually use the individual red, green, and blue colors that you need um, to make a color. So if you go into NeoPixel here, you can do this particular one down here somewhere. You just duplicate one of these a second. And you can do set the, the color of the LED. Let me drag it onto it, you can see it. Set the color of the LED at two to a particular number of red, green, and blue, a particular mix. It goes from zero to two five five for each color. Um, white is two five five, two five five, two five five and black is zero, zero, zero. So nothing, 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 or full, full, full. Um, and if you want to find um, a particular color, there is actually lots of sites. Um, there's one color here called picker. Color Picker, yeah. Yep. Um, and if you can see this, you basically can drag this bar on the right to what kind of rough color you want, and then you can adjust it here. And you will see down here, there's a, a box labeled R, G, and B. You take those colors. Um, so this one, let's not do red, because we can do that. Let's go and find Jasmine's favorite color. Um, and you change those and put those values in the box here. So the only problem is don't forget that red and green on this Christmas tree, I don't know if it's just the prototype again, are around the wrong way. So we need uh, green five. 5 to be in red. Red 255 five to go in green, which it is. And 234 in blue, because blue is correct. So if we did that, it's a bit long-winded, you have to go through that. Um, I'm hoping that the final versions won't have that problem, it'd be a bit easier. Um, but then you can just set exactly to exactly what colour you want. And you'll need to be able to do that if you want to set it to anything other than the standard colours that are in here. Which bear in mind, each LED could do millions of colours. It's good to actually try and do some interesting ones. And as I said, we'll probably try and do a video where we get it to cycle through lots of pretty colours and stuff. Well, thanks for watching the video. Um, make sure you check out the links below to all the tools and things and to check out Andrew's Pocket Money Tronics website. And please make sure you click the subscribe button uh, to catch up on all the latest videos. We've got lots planned between here and Christmas that we'd love to share with you. So that's all for now. Thanks a lot. See you next time.